Hello guys and welcome back to Hellblade. We're just gonna continue where we left off um, from the last episode. We're in the process of uh, reforging Odin's sword. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur. The second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. That's pretty refreshing, considering most uh, Norse gods seems to have uh, something wrong with them. Whoa! Look at this place! Holy moly! Hmm, let's just uh, take a few seconds here. Take in the scenery. Yeah, the sky makes uh, everything look so epic. Even though, uh, yeah, it's just one tiny tower. Ooh, a bridge. Probably should push it down. Ooh, it's that one. Hmm. Uh, yes I am. Ooh, look at that. Wow. It's lighter. It's nicer. I like it here. Can we stay? Let's stay here. I like the Uh I would stay here if I could. It's calming. The bridge. It's not broken. It's fixed. What happened? Feels like that mask represents Senua when she's having a good mood. Than the paws over there, but I had to feed the cat. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood. Beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness, swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. Oh, Loki. You can. Always up to mischief. You need the rooms. But yeah, that's uh, one overprotective mother. <laughs> that's good, I guess. Don't want anything to happen to your child. He's close. He loves you. Calling you. Dillian, we're here. Dillian. Don't listen to the voices. Dillian has uh, run away from us, like, since the beach. Run away from us in the maze and in the swamp. Hmm. 
figures it's locked. Let's try looking behind the mask slash face. See if that uh, helps open anything. Interesting. Dillian, there he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go through. Eh, don't worry about Dillian. Let's explore first. Like I said, if Dillian wanted to see us, he already already be at our side. not in here That's uh, an interesting thing. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the glow. And Seno explored new paths into the unknown. Yeah, it's interesting that Dillion only appears um, in the dark world. Does that mean he only exists um, in Senua's darkness? The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe. Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. <laughs> it's the same story as the... I guess Baldur is the guy in the God of War. The most current one. That's cool. Not in this world. No, not. He's the reason she keeps fighting. You can't. You can't. Yeah, after a while of uh, playing this game, it feels like the, the voices are just like a normal thing now. It doesn't uh, make me feel any uh, like. Anything different anymore. <laughs> she thought she had light within her. She is pure darkness. 
I used to think uh, they were so creepy. But I guess you get used to them. This room looks like uh, something wrong went wrong with uh, gravity. Sorry if I'm double backing, um, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, let's do this one. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Balder. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking pollen. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Hoth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hoth is slain. What? That's not fair. Do you know? You would think uh, everyone would be Yours going the after Loki. To be dead. How does that make you feel? The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship. But they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband and the pyre is lit. Sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns. Shapes. Movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Damn, that's cool. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. She was caught between two worlds. That of some and her past. And Dillian. A future. Two realities. The curse cannot be undone. I wonder what Zinbel did to, uh, I guess, foster Senua's mental illness. Your love because he believed in you. You have no time for this. Speak up. You trials to distract you. We've set you up, and now they're going to watch you. What if these trials mean nothing? Laughing at you. What if they take you no closer to Dillion? Look what happens if the three centipedes get in the way. What if they are just to tire you out, to make you weak? 
I personally think uh, Senua should just leave Delian alone. Huh? Can cross the chains. That would have been cool. Hmm. There's a stone over there. Huh. The layout of this place is different. Overcome with grief. Gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of Hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Holy fuck. Loki's uh, a huge dick. <laughs> he saw who she really was. He saw the warrior within. I hate people like that. Yeah, right now I'm just uh, randomly switching in between worlds, um, just because it seems like uh, yeah, the puzzles here are pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you uh, switch to another world, you just something else moves, and uh, yeah, just keeps on going. And basically, the puzzles just automatically unlock itself. Do you think she remembers him? Pretty linear. I like it because of the stories. The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, and so must we. Nice. Well, that's a good ending to the story. What if this is pointless? Dillion what what are you doing? Does it feel like the feel of us so strong? And there's another way. Why did you think you could make this work? You keep seeing runes. You see runes everywhere. Everywhere. But what if they're not in your ears? What it would be funny if uh, all of this was actually just a dream. And it actually was pointless. Really, the gods are playing with you. It makes sense in your mind, but it doesn't make sense. Worlds, the gods, but it doesn't mean anything. You can't read really hmm. it. Where is this thing? Oh. Maybe a little bit more. No? Maybe to the left. Dillion's in the tower. There we go. Mm, he's there. What if they're all about wasting your time? Just Dean is the only one by minute by minute. <laughs> what does she think she's doing? 
Nice. Now we can open this gate. And uh, hopefully meet up with Dillian. Although I highly doubt it. Dillian's just being a baby bitch. Oh my god. Really? Come on now. Alright. <laughs> Guess we have to cross this thing. Dillian never much cared for the underworld. And looked dimly upon the druids, like her father, Zinbal. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. And he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, and to see the world through his eyes. And slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. No one's gonna be falling, don't worry about it. You're going to fall, Kevin. No, she's not. She's not going to fall. She's strong. Yep. She's steady. She can do that it. voice can do it. that voice is telling the truth. Be very, very careful. You can't miss the part, don't make him slip away. It's a narrow, narrow. This bridge. dude's gonna jump, isn't he? You Oh my god. <laughs> Genoa. Your father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? Would you give up the beautiful world that you and only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares? Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? A gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. Interesting. I for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Huh. That's interesting. Um, I feel a lot of people will be uh, offended by this just because it feels like it's romanticizing mental illness. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll see you the next episode. Peace.